Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will show you how to design steel connections in RAM connection for an analyzed RAM structural system model. Now for this particular video we're going to be focusing on designing the beam column flange connections for the lateral moment frames that were designed in RAM frame. Let's start by reviewing the lateral system in RAM frame so we can better understand the forces we must resist through our connection design process. If we were to review the moment frames, I would notice that the lateral beams in the moment frames are fixed at both ends. I would also notice that each of the moment frame beams is reporting both a shear reaction and a moment reaction at each end. RAM connection can design connections for a variety of joints. During the connection design process, we will assign connections to the different joints using the RAM connection database of predefined connection templates, which are separated into different connection families. As we start designing connections, we will select joints within the same connection family with similar forces so they can be designed together. For the moment frame beams, I can approach the connection design in one of two ways. The first option is to assign a shear connection and a moment connection to each of these joints. Now I would want to ensure that the shear and moment connections are compatible with each other and with the joint data. The second option is to assign a combined connection to each of the joints. A combined connection can resist both shear and moment reactions. We will now turn our attention to the analyzed RAM structural system model in RAM connection where we will design the lateral beam column flange connections according to the AISC 360 specification which has already been selected. It should also be noted that for this particular model we are not designing connections for the seismic provisions. Now designing connections in RAM connection is a two-step process. You're going to start by selecting the joints you want to design together, typically joints of the same family with similar forces and joint data, and then you will select a connection database that's compatible with the currently selected joints. Now I find it easiest to work on one level at a time, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate the first floor level. To do that, I can right click in the main view window, select an elevation, and then select all of the members at the first floor level. To isolate these in the view, we can go up to the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar and hide unselected elements. And then I also like to work in a 3D view. Now joints can be selected by selecting members and nodes for a specific joint manually, or by selecting the joints using the Select Joints command, which I typically find easiest. To access that command, we're going to go to the Home tab of the ribbon toolbar and then we'll find the elements selection tools and a category for joints. Now we're going to notice that you can select joints of a particular family one at a time, or you can also use the special selection tool. I'm going to use a special selection tool as I want to select all of the beam column flange joints, but I'm specifically interested in the fixed end beams for this particular video. So here I'm going to go ahead and say select all of my beam column flange joints. I'm going to verify my releases and say fixed end beams. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click OK. Now for this particular model, all of the moment frames consist of wide flange beams and wide flange columns. And we're going to go ahead and choose to assign two different connections to each of these joints. We're going to select a shear connection and we're also going to select a moment connection in a subsequent step. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my joints selected and I'm ready to design. To start that process I'm going to go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. Let's start with our shear connection. I'm going to use a basic connection workflow for this exercise, and I'm going to choose to design my connections individually. 
we're going to notice that the filter is already set to the joints we currently have selected and I will see a display of all the different shear connections that are available. Now it's important to select a shear connection that's compatible with the joints you currently have selected and also thinking ahead I want to make sure I select a shear connection that won't interfere with my potential moment connection. I'm going to go ahead and select a double angle all bolted connection for the shear forces at the currently selected joints. To complete the connection design I can go ahead and click on the assign button and then I'm going to see that my connections have been assigned. Now a couple areas I like to point your attention to. In the bottom right hand corner of the screen you're going to see your status window. This will let you know if you have any errors or warnings during your connection process. If you had any errors or warnings it might mean that a connection template was selected that's not currently compatible with one or more of the joints that you had selected. So you're going to go ahead and review that information and then try a different connection template. Here I'm not getting any errors or warnings so the double angle connection that I selected is compatible with the currently selected joints. And here in the data area I can see that those connections were populated. Let's move on to the next step in our workflow, which is to go ahead and assign a moment connection to each of these joints. To start that process, let's go to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, and then we're going to click on our Assign icon. This time, let's go ahead and select a Smart Connection workflow. We're again going to design each connection individually. And instead of looking for a shear connection, let's take a look at the moment connections. Now for this particular example, I'm going to go with a DW connection. This is a full penetration welded connection. I'm going to select this connection template and then click on the assign icon. Now again, I'm going to take a look in the status bar and see if there are any errors or warnings reported. No errors or warnings were reported, so I know that a connection was assigned to all of the currently selected joints. Now after assigning your connections, the next step you're going to want to take a look at is to review the status of the connection design. To do that, let's go to the View tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and select the Status icon. What this will do is it will let you know if there are any errors or warnings encountered during the connection process. If everything turns out okay and you passed all code checks, your connection is going to be in green. If you received any errors or warnings on your connection design, those will be indicated in red. In addition to selecting this icon, we also want to make sure that this for the controlling combination is selected. This means that the highest interaction ratio will be reported when reviewing your design status. Now over in the design status legend, I could see that we can select each different type of status individually. So here I could see all connections that were okay. Every connection that's currently passing the code check, whether it was selected or not, will now be indicated in the data area. And then I can also review any connections that were no good. This means they failed the connection check. Okay, their interaction ratio is greater than 1.0. And I can also check to see if any connections have any warnings. We don't have any warnings for this particular model. Now we do have a couple of connections with errors. So let's go ahead and isolate those connections at this point. And what I want to do is I want to take a closer look at these connection designs. Now let's go ahead and select one of the failing connections and take a closer look at it through the connection pad. To do that, I can go ahead and zoom in on one of these connections. I can select it with my cursor and then go up to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar. I'm going to click on this Edit icon. This will bring up the connection pad for the currently selected connection, which is my Moment Connection, which is a directly welded connection. Over in this left-hand pane, I'm going to see a lot of the input information that reflects both the joint data and the load data. And this was supplied to the program by the RAM Structural System Analysis. 
I'm also going to notice that there are a couple different options that I can add, such as some reinforcement to this connection to possibly get to a passing connection design. Now before I play around with any of the parameters, let's go ahead and review the results to get a better idea of what is currently forcing this into a failing condition. So if we click on the results icon, I can review the steel connection report. I can scroll on down and I can see exactly which checks failed, what their interaction ratios are, and what code equation was used to determine this result. Now if I wanted some additional information, I can click on the View Formulas icon to see all the equations and variables that were used to calculate these results. Now for this particular model, I am seeing that there are some issues in the web panel shear, um, top local flange bending, and local web yielding. Now if I were to review this particular joint within the RAM frame steel mode, I would notice that the joint code check did flag this joint as potentially needing some reinforcement. So let's go ahead and take a look at our re reinforcement options in RAM connection. I do have the option to add transverse stiffeners for both the top flange, bottom flange, or both flanges. I also have the option to add a web panel stiffener. We can add a doubler plate or a diagonal stiffener. Here for this example, let's go ahead and select a doubler plate. I did see that that brought my interaction ratio down a bit, but not quite enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and also add some transverse stiffeners. I'm gonna add them to both flanges, and I'm also going to select any particular options that I'd like to add. Now, what I'm noticing is that my interaction ratio now is less than 1.0. So we are passing the code check requirements, but the interaction ratio is indicated in yellow, which means that a warning was encountered during the connection design process. So I'm gonna to return to my connection report at this point and get a better idea of what's producing the warning. So here it looks like for the transverse sifters that the Minimum recommended weld size is a quarter inch weld, that would be 4 sixteenths. I've provided a 3 sixteenths inch weld, and this is according to design guide 13. So let's go ahead and bump up that weld size from 3 sixteenths to 1 quarter. Now at this point, we can see our interaction ratio is less than 1.0, and it's now in green, which means that we have passed our four hour moment connection. Now, in addition to reviewing that information, we can also review our DXF and see how this connection would be detailed in a drawing. Now, at this point, if we like all the changes that we've made, we'll go ahead and click on the Save icon and then exit out of the connection pad. Here you're gonna notice once you make changes, we're going to see that status has been now turned to green, which means that the design is okay. I also want to mention that if you decide instead of adding reinforcement to the column, that you'd prefer trying to change your column size to try to get away from reinforcement, that sort of change should happen in your RAM structural system model because it will have repercussions for your lateral analysis. Now at this point, we have gone ahead and assigned our shear and moment connections to all of our moment frames at the first floor level. Of course, I'd want to review each and every connection design to make sure it was passing and there are no errors or warnings. Now the last thing I'm going to show you how to do in this video is how to review your joint data report for a group of selected connections. This will let you know if you've satisfied all the connection design requirements by assigning a connection or not. So let's go ahead and select all of the moment frame joints at this first floor level. Again, using the special joint selection tool. Now I wanna make sure that I've satisfied all of the connection requirements. So I'm gonna to go to the output tab in the ribbon toolbar, go to the data area, and then I'm gonna go with joints list. We'll click okay. 
And then I'll be able to see all of the currently selected joints, and I'll be able to see if a connection was assigned. Here I can see that all of the moment frame joints at the first floor level have a shear reaction and a moment reaction. And I can see that a shear connection and a moment connection were assigned to each of those joints. If I missed a joint through this process, I would be able to see that no connection was assigned in this table, and that will give me more information to go back and ensure that I've satisfied that connection requirement. At this point, let's go ahead and close out of this report. Now to complete your workflow for the rest of the moment frames in this particular model, you're going to, number one, want to edit any failing connections in the connection pad. And then number two, proceed your way up through the three-dimensional structure and assign the appropriate connections to your moment frame. Again, you can do that by assigning a shear and a moment connection to the single joint, or you can assign a combined connection which can resist both shear and moment forces. At this point, this completes our workflow for assigning connections to all of our fixed beam column flange joints in our analyzed RAM structural system model using RAM connection. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.